Hello and welcome. Well, I've got a question for you. How are you doing? You know, throughout this pandemic, how have you been taking care of yourself or have you not been taking care of yourself? You know, after being kept indoors for so long now, um, if you were to really be honest with yourself and rate uh, out of a score of one to 10, 10 being totally exhausted, whereabouts are you sitting and feeling at the moment? You know, as, as lovely as the stay-at-home era has been and is, um, it really is exhausting. And life pre-COVID was already busy and tiring enough. <laughs> um, but where I guess where our usual lives, we've had to ma maintain so much of that being our jobs and, and keeping our houses in order and looking after the kids, COVID-19 has really put an extra layer of stress on top of our already busy lives. And this has left many parents feeling run down and burnt out which is not good for anyone, let's face it. So the question is, how can we prevent burnout? Uh, well, today we welcome our very special guest, Francesca Pinzoni, who's going to help us talk about this. Now, Francesca is the co-founder and uh, CEO of Umbo, a uh, social enterprise that addresses one of Australia's biggest hidden problems, which is access to speech and occupational therapy in regional Australia. Now, Francesca has a ton of qualifications, including a master's degree in international public health from the University of Sydney. Now, she has over 12 years experience working in not-for-profit organisations overseas in countries like Pakistan, the UNICEF in India. Um, she's worked for Canteen here in Australia. And she also currently teaches at the University of New South Wales um, with the, their Centre of Social Impact Oh, and before I forget, she's actually a busy mum of three young children, <laughs> and which one of them has received speech pathology. Thank you so much for joining us today, Francesca. I'm really thrilled that you're joining us. How are you? I'm really good, and thank you so much for having me today. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here with you to talk about this topic because it's really important. It is really important. And um, as we were just saying offline before, it is a heavy topic. So we're going to try as much as possible to put a, a positive lens onto this, right. um, but at the same time communicating, I guess, a very important message to everyone. But they are interesting times at the moment. Um, and I guess where we're not physically running around like we used to and dropping kids off and picking them up, um, it does really feel like we are much more tired than normal um but if we think about it logically it's not really possible because in how look we are sort of in the one place so this has mm. me thinking you know our fatigue and tiredness may not be so much of a physical tiredness rather more than a mental exhaustion caused from stress and anxiety so on in the get-go i'd love to know what, what are your thoughts on this yeah, I do think that's a really interesting question because we have spent so long, you know, running around every day. We run to sport after school, we run to work, we get ourselves ready, we get our kids ready. And it's that is a real kind of physical challenge for us. But I have noticed myself, you know, being a lot more kind of um, tired at home. I think it's that stress and this compounding feeling of trying to work trying to school your children, trying to keep them safe. You know, um, you go to the supermarket by yourself because you're scared to take your children out because they touch everything. Um, also trying to help them with their health and anxiety, talking about the virus that's around and their fears. So there's so, and then, you know, participating in all these Zoom calls and meetings when your kids are running in the background, it's a real challenge. And I, I think you're right. There's this sense of tiredness and exhaustion that, it's not the physical tiredness, it's this compounding mental kind of tiredness that we're feeling, which it, it feels very different than pre-COVID. Yeah. And so I think there's some, there's some things around, you know, not doing all the drop-offs and pickups has been great. The mm. occasional sleep, you know, more sleepings um, have been great, but it's this, yeah, this mental kind of tiredness that I think is, yeah, it's a heaviness, I think, and uncertainty and economic problems. There's so many different things that I think is making us feel, yeah, a lot, this way. a lot more exhausted. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I guess, you know, this whole COVID era, I guess, despite, despite making a slowdown, as you were just saying, has really meant that we are dealing with additional psychological strains. There's almost like wearing us out. It sort of feels like at the moment. So what, what's been your personal experience with this? Have you had, because I mean, as we just mentioned before, you are busy um, with lots of different things, but have you found that you feel it, it is sort of like wearing you out or anything like that at all or not maybe? It is. 
Well, it is in, in different ways. So I guess from a work perspective, it's been really interesting trying to, firstly, we had to navigate into this kind of online world. And um, that happened with my work at Umbo. We had to change some of the ways that we did um, undertook our work, moving from, you know, increasing our client numbers to increasing the number of therapists who need our support. But also my work at the university, we had to translate courses that were in a face-to-face -face environment <laughs> into an online environment within a matter of a week uh, which was fun. also a challenge <laughs> it was fun um, but yeah it was certainly a challenge and you know I had a lot of American students who were called back to America so you know that was a massive stress for them and supporting them through that but yeah it's this having having our children home and in our world all the time um, and as much as we love them but the amount of times I hear mum 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 <laughs> every single day <laughs> it kind of just slowly chips away at you. So I think it's a real balance of the work and the home. And it does kind of at the end of the day when it's, you know, 8.30 at night and I'm kind of just sitting on the couch, I don't want to do anything. I just want to switch everything off because yeah. that's kind of the coping strategy. We just don't put the to, news on, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't put the news on. No, I, I've been watching some really good trashy TV. That's always been a really good um, nice. downtime thing for me. And nice. I love a bit of trashy TV and it, <laughs> it works well. So the other good thing that um, a lot of my colleagues do before we start any of our meetings, we do do a bit of a personal check-in. How are you going? How do you feel? Um, what's this week like? And so some weeks have been fine for me and some weeks it's just gotten on top of me. And I've been really honest with them and said, actually, you know, this isn't a good week. Um, mm. and, and it's really nice to have that support to actually say that to, you know, my colleagues and say, actually, it's, it's been tough, you know. Yeah. And they can, they can help you with that, which is great. Well, that's just the thing, I guess, with all the extra energy that everyone's putting out, I guess many, many parents haven't actually done a check-in with themselves and realised they yeah. haven't been really doing much to put their energy back in uh, to yeah. top up their energy levels. Um, so like, yeah. this is so important for parents to do this. Yeah, it is really important. And I think, you know, we've often talked about with, with mums particularly is around self-care and this really important need to look after yourself and fill your cup first. Or there's that always that analogy with the oxygen yep. mask on the aeroplane, you know, put yours on first. But if your um, cup filler was to get a massage or your cup filler was to, I don't know, um, go somewhere to a coffee shop, have breakfast and read your book alone, you've lost that. And so that's really hard. You have to find new ways to provide practice your own self-care and if you're not someone who likes to sit in that introspective meditative environment that can be really hard you know yeah. I'm a bit of a I like to get out I'm not much more you know I don't mind reading my book I love reading my book but I like to get out and, and do those types and walk of things and and yeah, and you've kind of lost some of that besides the walking, um, you've kind of lost, you know, going to the shops and things that maybe you actually quite enjoy doing. And I think that's been a challenge for a lot of people as well. Yeah, well, we think about even just going to the shops now. <laughs> Doing my food shopping on the weekend. <laughs> well, actually, that's a bit of a break. I quite like the food shopping at the moment. It's a bit of a break. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, yeah still have the back of your mind and you're still seeing people with masks and gloves walking around yeah. and and rightfully yeah. so but you know it yeah. is you know even the simplest things now sort of can cause some subconscious yeah. anxiety <laughs> but Absolutely. I find yeah, laughter is a really great way to lift your energy levels and it's always I guess the best medicine for anything so you know I, I, mm -hmm. like you said with you getting out and moving and you know for me it's always putting on a, a funny film or listening to a comedian or just yeah. listening to my partner who's just a comedian himself he's just the way <laughs> sees the world is enough you know um yeah. <laughs> and, and i guess for any parent just listening to their children's laughter can be some of the most uplifting and healing sounds that we can experience so which is really yeah. good food for thought so i think you know um lifting stress and anxiety i think definitely laughter is mm. a really good thing as well now we published your article preventing burnout as a mum for someone who hasn't read the article yet can you please give us an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it yeah, sure. So I, um, I think it's really important. What inspired me, I guess, is that we carry so much load often and it, it's not always um, just mums, but we do do so many things on a daily basis that sometimes we don't actually take stock of. So I actually recently wrote a, not a to-do list, but a what I've done list. And I did it on like a typical morning. And I just wrote every single thing that I'd done, including have a shower and get dressed and get myself ready, but also, you know, get the kids ready, make their lunch, do all these things. 
And actually, it was really interesting to see how much, like, by 10 o'clock, I'd actually achieved. Crammed into a having, day. <laughs> crammed into a day. And, like, rather than having this negative idea of, oh, I've got, now I've got to do this and this, I actually looked at what I'd achieved so far. And so then I also put that down of, you know, I was feeling a little bit stressed out. This was pre-COVID. But feeling a little stressed out, thinking, gosh, you know, there's all these things like medical appointments for kids and birthday party planning and then buying the birthday presents and all these things. So I actually wrote them down just to write and see what I did on a, on a weekly basis or whatever it might be. What things were my responsibility? And it was absolutely enlightening to see why I felt the way I did. Yeah. Because the this list is was a three pages like. long. <laughs> yeah. This was, the list was three pages long. And so it was no surprise. So then I kind of wanted to really think about, you know, what is it that I do then to try and stop myself burning out from that? And so I wrote that article because I think that there's some interesting tips and pieces that I've gathered over time from different people. I think we can always learn from, you know, various people. Um, different kind of um, coping strategies, I think, or ways to prevent the burnout before it actually happens because it's much harder to fix something once it's already happened. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I think that's really important is the more we can do now before we hit that point of, you know, explosion um, or whatever that may be, it's better to try and do it now. So one of the things, a couple of the key topics I focused on was, you know, as parents, life is chaos. There is chaos, but if you fight against that chaos all the time, it's like being in the water and trying to swim against a rip. You know, everyone tells you, let the rip take you out, and then you kind of work out how to get out of that rip. And I kind of try and think like that, you know, if the more I try and fight the chaos, the more it's going to kind of wear me down. So let's just embrace some of the chaos. Motherhood is chaotic. We know that, right, from day dot. So let's embrace that. Um, and then that ties in to the next thing I covered, which is control. You know, there's a lot of, we're always trying to control many things, but so many things are out of our control. Yeah. And if we actually accept the things out of our control that we don't, or that we cannot control, then it reduces your anxiety. So the whole thing around COVID and homeschooling, well, we have, it's out of our control. We don't know when it's going to stop. I mean, obviously we've had some changes lately, but we don't know when the virus is going. So there's no point stressing too much over it because it's just the situation that we're in yeah so i think having control you know uh, you know trying to always control things can actually increase your anxiety and increase your mental kind of stress mm. uh i also um wanted to kind of bring up about time out and make it good like quality time out so like i said if your thing is reading a book then take that time to read it don't feel guilty i mean the guilt that we have as mothers is just <laughs> beyond you know um take the time out to read your book or um go for a massage when you're allowed to or whatever it might be it's really important to rejuvenate yourself i think yeah and just have just have a bit of silence oh. a little bit of quiet <laughs> It's really important, just a bit of quiet. Um, and I guess the other couple of points I was really, you know, interested to kind of share is that, you know, when you juggle, when you juggle things, like not all balls are, are up in the air. I think that's really important just to remind yourself that, you know, you, so if work might be going really well, but home might be, you know, a bit off kilter or it can be the opposite or whatever it is, but it's never going to be perfect. So yes. I think that's really important to know. And my final kind of thought was around, you know, we we need to embrace the good people in yes. our lives. So who are the good people? You just talked about your husband, who's a comedian. Who's oh, a not husband, comedian. not husband's partner. Oh, partner, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, your partner, who's a comedian, who's obviously like amazing, you know, for you. And that's what you need. So, you know, I try and lean on my husband because he's, you know, he's very calm and he, um, he's very funny too. And he loves kicking the football with my kids, which I can't. You know, I don't like it. So that's good. That's his job. So I lean on him for those things. My friends, if they say, I'll come over with a coffee, you know, great. Like lean on your community and lean on your village. And so these are the kind of things that I do to yeah. try and stop that feeling of stress and anxiety that then leads to that burnout feeling. So just surrounding yourself with good people, yeah? I think it's really important. I really do. And then, look, it's not perfect for everyone. Like you, you may not have those good people, but if you can find them, like you hang on to them, you know, you really do. And you pull them right in. 
Well, that's just the thing, you know, like when you take a, a bit of an inventory of your life and you sort of work out who are the energy vampires and the people that do actually take the energy from you. Um, and then you just, I think a healthy relationship with friends, family or anyone in your life, it's, it's, there's give and take, isn't there? That as long as there yeah. is that, that equal balance as much as possible, there's going to be times when you're going through a harder time and you're going to need to lean yeah. on your friends more and, and vice versa. But, you know, Absolutely. in the grand scheme of things, it is a 50-50. So it's a, a, at a time at the moment when we're already exhausted, we're already run down, we're already got so much stuff going on, depending on where life is at, the last yeah. thing you need is an energy vampire in your life and them taking totally. them, you know, so it might just be time just to maybe just um, have, put that, those friendships on pause, maybe. Have a, have a look at that list of friends and make sure yeah, yeah. you've got the good Put ones. that on the list. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have that on your to-do list. <laughs> yes. And well, this is the thing, even subconsciously, when you think about those types of people in your life that do drain you, even if it's not that you, you're speaking to them and seeing them so much, that you, in your subconscious mind that you, you can, they can drain your thoughts and, and your energy. So, you know. You know, when, you, when you're looking at your to-do list, like, you, like you were just saying before, you know, if you've got someone in your life, they may have already taken 20% of your energy of the day because you're worried about what they said or all of that yucky yeah. stuff that can happen yeah. in our lives, you know. It's very true. They're out there. You've got to be careful. Hey. They are. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to short. identify them. That's right. Life's too short. Just know who they are. Um, okay. Right. So <laughs> now for you as a co-founder, a chief um, operating officer of a social enterprise, um, a university lecturer and a mother of three, you, you are a superwoman. But I'd oh, love to know how are you well, currently thanks. prioritizing your time and managing, I guess, all the various responsibilities in your life during this this pandemic and crazy time at the moment? Uh, yeah, well, it has been chaos, I have to be really honest. Um, but I guess for me, the easiest way to do that, I kind of compartmentalise things sometimes. So on the days that the kids are home, because obviously they've gone back to school a couple of days now um, in New South Wales, we're allowed to go back to school a few days. Um, so the days that they're home, I'm doing my very best to try and focus on their schoolwork if I can. It's not going that well. I'm trying not to kind of stress about it. Um, I also have a four-year-old who um, doesn't want to do any anything. She just wants to lie on the couch or jump on the trampoline. Um, so that's kind of been really tricky to juggle um, when they're home. On the days that they've gone to school now, I'm really trying to focus on work and get as much done so that I'm not distracted when they're at home because it is really hard to, to balance that distraction of work or it's not even distraction what your kind of you know what your priority is at work but also your children and I do want to look back at this time because it's really unique it Um, is so once in a generation it is and I want to look back and think oh I hope they didn't think I just shouted at them all the time to do their homework (laughs) or you know um, I want them to think oh it was really lovely to spend time with mum and dad you know or my siblings or whoever it is and so I I I really am trying very hard when I have my kids at home to actually spend that time with them. That said, the homework and the schoolwork that's coming home, oh, my gosh, it's, it's, it's been tough. It's been really tough. The struggle is real. Um, the struggle is real. I can't even understand what they actually want them to do half the time, <laughs> let alone actually do the work, you know. And plus I've got two boys and a girl, so my boys, like, they, their attention spans about 20 minutes, if that. If that, and then they, you know, they're rolling on the couch, they're wrestling, they're rumbling, you know, so it is, it is really interesting spending such a lot of time together. Yeah. And you, like mm. a lot of mums at the moment, um, already had a lot on your plate before the pandemic. And now there's, as you yeah. just mentioned, you're homeschooling, working from home. Um, and I guess there's just, there's so much more going on. So how are you personally managing your mental health at this time? Yeah, so for me, um, so the other day, last Thursday, I think I said to my husband, who's also working from home, but he's kind of working a lot more in the office, depending on the time, at about 3.30, I said, they are all yours. <laughs> I'm, I'm just disappearing for half an hour. And so I just went up to the be- my bedroom and I just shut the door and I said, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not going to talk to anybody for half an hour. I've been trying to get out and exercise, do a walk in the morning because it does totally change your mindset. Yeah. Um, as to things and I'm very lucky I live near near the water so I can go for a walk you know um along the water and I've been meeting a friend you know every Saturday and we do a really long walk and have a coffee afterwards and that's been that's been really good it's been really helpful for me so I think just you know really kind of this idea of you know the way I'm trying to you know approach my mental health is 
I'm not going to do it all. I can't do it all. It's, it's absolutely impossible to do it all. And, you know, managing my kids' behaviours as well as, you know, and their stress and anxiety plus mine plus their schoolwork plus work, it, it's just impossible. So I think just really being really honest and pragmatic, what can I do? What can we achieve? Um, and like I said, leaning on my husband, leaning on, you know, my parents trying to do Zoom calls with them so they can do a bit of maths homework so I can have a bit of, you know, time. I think all those types of things are really important for my mental health. Yeah. And, and I guess leveraging off the community around you as well. Is this something that you, you've done a lot of? Yeah, so the I'm surrounded like in my kind of little village of myself, I've got my colleagues at work. And so I've tried to, you know, work really, we work really closely together. So it's leveraging off them, um, saying to them, you know, I may or may not get something done or actually just seeing their faces is really nice when we have our Zoom calls and they've got a different energy than what I'm at at home. So that's actually really good for me to see other people and, you know, their perspectives. Um, and yeah, like you said, kind of my um, community, my family, those, um, you know, we've been sharing a lot of chats on WhatsApp. We've been sharing a lot of information, same for my friends, you know, we've been doing a trivia night. So things like that, you know, really leaning on your community for that kind of, connection that social connection and to kind of decrease that feeling of kind of living in a bubble within your own house i think that's yeah. really important as well and to share these like parenting challenges i sent a photo to some of my friends the other day of my you know they're all lying on the floor the kids are all lying on the floor <laughs> um, i don't even know what they were doing and my daughter's doing some form of gymnastics and i said you know today today's um lesson was around uh what was it um defiance um, irritability and something else. We're, talk we're talking about emotions today because just I just kind of gave up and thought, well, I'm not going to stress about it, you know. <laughs> so yeah. sharing that information with your friends I think is really important as well. And, and how do you know when you're close to burnout um, and for others thinking that they're going through burnout or can see yeah. that it's not far away? So what's your advice for them, I, I guess? Yeah, I guess for me, in terms of feeling, if I'm getting close to that, I think sometimes it's that physical feeling that you get as well, that kind of you feel it in your tense, the tenseness in your shoulders. Um, I also get that feeling of, you know, you get a bit snacky and you get, you know, a little bit oh, yes. um, irritable over different things. Um, and I, um, I think I said this before, but the other day, you know, we're spending so much time together and my three children, they like to... Um, uh, excuse the words, but fart a lot and or fluff a lot. And I said to them, you know, okay, rules in place now. Like you excuse yourself and go out of the room to do it. I think it's just overload of, of, of so much. Um, and so that for me was like one of those moments. I was like, right, you know, rules are in place and we're no not doing fighting. this anymore. <laughs> no more fighting in this house. You need, your, you need a fight, you go outside. <laughs> exactly. And it kind of goes away from things that I'd read. Like Maggie Dent has, you know, she does a lot about raising boys. And she's oh, like, love boys love fart jokes and they love farting and they love burping and stuff. And she's like, you've got to embrace that if you've got boys, right? So I've tried to let myself do that and just be not too precious about it. But the other day I'd had enough. And I was just like, right, no more, you know, everybody stop. So, and that for me was like, okay, I think I've had enough. I think I need to go for a walk. And, you know, I'm getting to that point of, you know, I can feel myself getting stressed out. And it came out, <laughs> it came out in a conversation, you know, in the, in the way of um, farting as opposed to something else, if yeah. that makes sense. You needed so a fart, so you went outside. I, <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself that excuse to walk out the front door. Um, hey, one or excuse. the other. If you <laughs> yeah, exactly. just need it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I just think, you know, it's really important to, and I think for, you know, for other people, like find those signs, recognize those signs and try and get onto them early. So if you feel that tightness in your chest or whatever it is, or you yeah. look around your living room and it's completely chaos and there's toys and books, like what, find the signs and the triggers for you and get onto them early. Cause I think that's really important. Yeah. You know, we have to kind of, again, you know, prevention is better than cure. You have to get there, you know, try and tackle that burnout feeling before it comes and it takes over. Cause once you're there, it's so hard to get out, look, of, and look, know, and get out of that sense. And burnout is so real, isn't it? Like, you know, it parents just so keep real. pushing themselves until one day they wake up and they're like, I can't get myself out of bed. Um, right. And it's almost, almost like running a car when there's no petrol. And at one point it just it stops is. working. What do you think? Yeah. Like, Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And, you know, you, you can't be a great, 
you won't be a great parent if you can't look after yourself as well, I think. And that's what's really important as well is, you know, we all want to do the best that we can for our kids. We love them. They're driving us crazy, but we love them. And so in order to do that, you have to, you really do have to take care of yourself and take care of your relationships, you know, mm. whoever it is that you, you co-parent with or those relationships with your kids, you want to have really nice relationships with them. And so it's, it's really important to take that time out so that you can actually build those relationships. But why do you think it's, you know, what us all like, sort of leave it to, like, till it's like too late and, and realise um, that we, we're going to do something like when we are burnt out? Like, why do we leave it so late, do you think? Oh, we're just so good at putting ourselves last. I think sometimes it's the whole burnt toast, you know, and I saw my mum do it. She was amazing. I've got twin older sisters and a younger brother. And so there's four of us and, and she looked after us and, and it's this, you know, but she always took the last bit of toast and it was always the burnt piece because we put everybody else's needs first. And so I think we don't recognise those signs of burnout in ourselves until sometimes it is too late. And yeah. then you think, I should be able to do this. Why can't I manage my kids and my work? And so and so over there manages their work fine, you know, and they can do this and this 100%. with their kids. But we don't, you know, we have to look at what works for us as individuals. You might be great at delegating and outsourcing stuff, and that's what works for you and your family. So I think we just have to, st we can't compare ourselves to other parents. We can't compare ourselves to social media. We know none of that's, you know, the reality. And so I think that we need to make sure that we do prioritise ourselves and don't let ourselves get to that point before it happens. Yeah. And look, there is a, a really serious side to burnout that we should speak about briefly that can affect mm. our health. It's not just, I guess, being busy is like wearing a badge of honour and sort of that, you know, we all love to be busy. And everyone, there's different levels of busyness and all that sort of stuff, but it's not something that we should really be, um, I guess, able to accept in a long term for, for like a prolonged period of time because that stress right. and that burnout can lead to very serious health issues and even neurological disorders um, mm -hmm. and that being illnesses of the nervous system um, I know this personally because I I was diagnosed with MS multiple sclerosis when I was young um, and at that point um, I I I didn't realize that I guess there are hundreds of millions of people worldwide that are affected by neurological disorders that are possibly and mostly can be preventable um, just from managing stress better. Um, mm. They are things like strokes, um, serious migraines and other headache disorders like MS, brain tumors and all that yucky stuff. So my point really is not to scare anyone. It's just the fact that, and as you said at the very start of this chat, a lot of these things can be preventable. We just, we just need to know at what point how does our body feel when we are in that, that place of high stress? Um, mm. And, you know, um, with the nervous system, that's something everyone, everyone's body feels differently. Like how does your, yours feel like when you're really stressed? What, what do you yeah, feel? I get this, I get this kind of um, funny sense in my shoulders, this kind of heaviness or this tightness. And I feel like I just need to, you know, have a big stretch and a shake out. And often for me, I just, I've got to move. Like I've got to go for a walk or I've got to do something, even if it's a yep. quick walk around the block. But I can feel this kind of heaviness that kind of comes over me. And I know that, you know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to yell about, you know, the kitchen being dirty or something like, oh, I can feel it happening. Or, you know, I'm probably not going to be great in my work interactions, you know, because obviously, you know, you can be a bit short on your emails and things because, you know, you've got a lot of things to do. So I do get those physical manifestations sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing is, you know, stress is linked to a lot of inflammatory conditions. So it's not just around, you know, it's around how your stomach feels and how your body feels oh, overall. So there's so many different kind of um, physical indicators of stress, not just the, you know, the mental kind of um, indicators of stress for you for you, you know. Um, so I think it's just, it's so important to kind of know your triggers and know your points where you actually start to feel it. So I do get migraines and often those migraines are coming when, you know, I kind of work too late or I'm overtired, those types of things. And I know, I know they're coming and I know what I have to do to try and stop it. But sometimes you're on that treadmill and yep. you're still running and you just kind of can't jump off. And so you don't jump off, but then, you know, the inevitable happens and you end up with a migraine or whatever it might be. So it's really important to, to kind of see those signs in yourself and actually try and minimise whatever those stresses are at that time. Yeah. And that's the easier thing. said than done. It, oh, it's so much easier said <laughs> yeah. than done. And that's just the thing, but yeah. this is about prolonged stress. This is just not about the, I guess the last sort of, yeah. you know, 
three months, no. however long it's been with COVID-19. This is something that over a prolonged period of time, which, but we can sweep these things under the carpet quite easily. So it's about yeah. knowing, yeah. as you just said, what the warning signs are, at what point your, your body's really giving you like that flashing red light, <laughs> slow yeah. down, um, yeah, and which is time to apply those coping mechanisms. Um, and I think it's having that honest conversation with yourself uh, saying, you know what, maybe I'm not okay at the moment and I do yeah. need to put myself first. So this is just a personal yeah. note to anyone listening, just to be aware um, of what your body is telling you to listen to your body and really just to be kind to ourselves. Cause as you said, we are trying to in, in all these instances, be all things to all people. Um, it's almost yeah. a, a weakness to say, I can't do this or I'm, can yeah. I do this later? I mean, God forbid, yeah. oh my goodness, we do it later. Like the world's not going to come to an end. The world but, is not going to end. It yeah. Really isn't. Yeah. It and really it's almost isn't. like having a daily check-in of saying, okay, as I said at the very start of this chat of a score of one to 10 and 10 being total exhaustion, how am I feeling today? Um, mm. But being honest with yourself. Um, so, you know. Um, I, but the other thing as well, I think, you know, um, all of the, the negative, um, things that have been happening with COVID-19 as well, I think instead of being optimistic about the future and having things to look forward to can also help us, um, put us into a positive state of mind. Um, and, um, you know, of course, reduce anxiety, illness and all of that fatigue and that yucky stuff. So, you know, it's been said that I guess planning ahead and setting goals for things that we can achieve and are realistic once we sort of get to the other side, um, I guess, of COVID-19 and out of lockdown can sort of help, um, get us out of a negative state. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are, um, on, on the positive thinking and all the optimistic stuff as well. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's really important. You know, they say, there's that saying that says when you come home from a holiday, you've got to plan the next one. So you've got something to look forward to. And it's yeah. kind of like that. We have to think what's next, what what's coming and what, what do we really want to enjoy? And I think for me, for example, it's going to be the little things, like the little things like going out and having a, having a, a breakfast out with your friends or your family or the little things that we probably maybe took for granted that we don't, you know, that we haven't had for a while. And now actually we're really happy to do those things. Um, my kids keep asking to go to the swimming pool, which is the wrong time of year, but that's, that's what they are kind of missing the most. So finding the good and the joy in those little things I think is really important. I know some of my colleagues are really keen to get back into the office. I'm not quite there yet, but I know that they are. So, you know, just looking forward to that kind of social connection with your work colleagues, I think um, is another thing that, you know, is really important. For me, with the business that we have with Umbo, we've seen such incredible changes um, that have happened and our business has really grown. So I'm so excited to see what's going to happen with that because we've, you know, we're seeing more um, children, we're helping more families, we're seeing more people in communities. And for me, like my, so the purpose of what I do drives everything. And so for me, that's something really I really want to look forward to it. I want to talk to families and find out, you know, how they find our services, how we've helped ease, you know, stress or anxiety in their lives, how we've helped their kids communicate. So for me, that's another, um, you know, real positive that I think, you know, is kind of driving what I do. So when I am working late at night or when I am tired or stressed or looking at the list of things, um, I go back to that and that always helps me. It, it kind of regrounds me in that um, that positive outcome that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. And also for me, we had a holiday, a big family holiday that was booked um, that obviously we can't take. And it was the first massive holiday we've had in about 10 years. So I'm just thinking about when that's going to be. <laughs> And maybe a year, maybe two years, but it's just something to look forward to, something kind of that, you know, we can we can enjoy. So there's lots of different positives I think we need to take from this. Yes. Well, you've given us lots to think about um, in this chat today. If you were to, I guess, summarise your key messages for anyone listening and watching, what, what would they yeah. be? So I think for me, the key messages are, you know, find your your tribe, your community and lean on them. You know, we're, our friends, our family, who is it that we need to, our work colleagues um, and, and lean on them. Get that, you know, let's help each other. Let's help each other out. Let's really, you know, support each other in this time. The other thing is, you know, find that burnout, like find those signs early. Try and get onto them as early as possible. And don't be afraid to say, I need time out. I'm done. You know, I just need to walk away or whatever it might be for a little while because, you know, we need to do that. 
we need to give ourselves that self-care and that time to actually and, and be honest with yourself. You're not you can't do everything. We cannot be perfect teachers, perfect parents, perfect um, extracurricular activity providers, whatever it is that your kids or your family has been doing. We cannot be all those people. So choose what you're gonna do and and kind of stick to that, but you know, don't beat yourself up over that. So they're probably my key takeaways is yeah, find your village, find your family lean on them and don't stress about the things that are out of your control and just be kind to yourself hey be kind to yourself it's so important yeah well look if anyone's got any other questions and or wants to find out more about umbo whereabouts can they find you yeah, so um, you can go to our website, umbo.com.au, and you can um, find out more information about Umbo there, or you can um, check out my LinkedIn profile. And yeah, I'm always open to questions or having a chat. Francesca, I've loved this chat. Let's do it again soon. Take care. So have I. Thank you so much. Bye. Right, bye.